Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a video called my top five cool growing plants. And to be honest, I'm a little bit more in tune with the cool growing plants because obviously I live in the UK in a temperate climate. So I thought today we'd have a look at my top five warm growing plants, which I actually found a little bit more difficult because obviously warm growing plants are a little bit further away from my comfort zone. So let's jump in. And we are in. Okay, my top five warm growing plants. And I think it may end up being my top seven. We might tie a couple of them, cheat a little bit. Well, it's my channel, I can cheat if I like, can't I? So yeah, I found it a little bit more difficult over here in the warm side because I think if I chose my top five, it would be different depending on what time of year it is. So obviously we're just about at the beginning of March, so I'm going to choose them depending on what's going on in the greenhouse right now in the warm side. So I keep it 18 degrees Celsius here. The criteria is going to be pretty much the same as what I had for the cool growing, except scaled up. So we're talking about things like temperature tolerance. So they need to be able to survive at 18 degrees and they need to be able to go higher and lower depending on what's going on at the time. I have it going up to 36 at some point in here, but probably a little bit more even if the sun's particularly hot that day and there's no breeze. Um, doesn't happen a great deal, I have to say, in the UK, but it does happen. Even now, I think today it's been up to about 5, 6 degrees Celsius and it was 20 in the cool side. I've got that strange dilemma at this time of year as to whether to open the vents and let the temperature drop right down again and the heaters come on or leave the vents closed and have it way more than what it's supposed to be. Um, that's just what happens when you're in a greenhouse. So we're going to have a quick look round here and I'm going to try and pick out and explain why I think these are my top five. Again, it's going to be for my conditions and I don't have a huge range of plants. I have quite a lot, but I don't have a huge range of plants. So no doubt there will be plenty that will be added to this list as time goes on. Um, so yeah, we said temperature, something like humidity. I would like something that's not really that fussy about humidity. Something that obviously doesn't mind it because in my greenhouse, whether I have a fog going or not, it tends to be quite humid. There are some times during the summer that it doesn't. Um, so what's that? Humidity, temperature, watering, I'd like something, again, that doesn't mind if I forget occasionally, doesn't mind sitting in water a little bit if some of it drains through. Um, doesn't really demand an awful lot of water, as in a daily water, uh, that kind of thing. Media, something that really that I've cracked, as, as with the media, something that I've actually found a formula that works for me. So that's something that uh, I, I will add to this criteria. As far as light goes, again, I don't want something that's really, really sensitive to too much or too little. I try to put things in the kind of light that they like, but when it's so stuffed full of plants, really, it just gets wherever there's a space. It gets to go wherever there is a space for it. So with those things in mind, I know it's a very loose criteria, but I don't want to drone on too much about the criteria. I just want to pick my favourites for now, and maybe that will fit in with yours if you have similar conditions to me. So in no particular order, I am going to pick, let me see, well, it wouldn't really be my channel, would it, if I didn't pick Tredescantia. I seem to have more Tredescantia videos than anything else. So I'm not picking a particular variety of Tredescantia. I'm just going to pick Tredescantia because it can be as different as that one. That's Nanook Lilac and this kind of bushy red jewel one that I've got going on here. It could be the trailing. I don't know if this one's red jewel or Zabrina. I'll have to watch one of my own videos to find out. I think that one is, if I just look closely at it, I think that one's Zabrina actually. Um, I will take you down to these ones that are growing so well down here. You can see all the lovely silver there. We've got both there, I think. Another one over here, trailing up. And even though this uh, maiden's blush has looked horrendous for most of the year, you can just see it there. It's coming nice now. And we've even got some beautiful pink over on that one over there. That's looking really nice. Um, another red jewel there. And we mustn't forget, we also have the uh, the purple one here, which I forget what it's called. How can I forget? I have loads of the stuff. 
uh, purple heart I think some people call it um, this one is just getting going here this is the tricolour minima the one over in the, cold, the cooler side is doing way better than that one at the moment so yeah I think we'll have to choose a Tredescantia just because I think once you understand them you know that you're never going to be without it it's just a case of realising that sometimes a year they look dreadful and you just have to keep renewing them, cutting those growing tips off and sticking them back in the pot as cuttings or clippings, as I believe some people call them in some areas of the world. So, yeah, I'll have that on the list, Cherescantia. Uh, I think another one that I might choose, it's really boring for some people, a Phalaenopsis. So this little mini, well, I was going to call it a no-ID file, but I think we do have a, an ID for it now. So this one is Phalaenopsis Long Pride Gold Staff. It is so easy for me anyway. And this one has been in bloom for over 12 months. It's a very, very good performer for me. And it just keeps throwing out the blooms and they last absolutely ages. This particular one there has been in bloom for at least six months and uh, it keeps sending lovely leaves out for me and you can see i've got that one growing as it would do in the wild it's growing down not up so i uh, yeah i'm going to add that to the list so that's two um i will add this i know it's not in bloom at the moment i'll put some blooms up either shots or some video up so this is the first orchid on my list and you can just see the label there brassia orange delight and why I like this one is, again, it's just not fussy. It just absolutely loves the conditions here. And it's always either in bloom with its lovely, large, spidery, orangey, yellow blooms, or it's throwing up a spike. So, again, it's I think this is the third blooming in the last six months. Uh, what's not to like? So, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely number three. I think I can't possibly miss off the Mandeville at Sanderi, can I? Just running along there, there's a bloom there. We're actually in the uh, the fallow period for the Mandeville Sanderi. I'm just kind of scanning up to the ceiling. It's a bit of a mess up there at the moment. I'll have to do something about that once I get the, uh, the vents open. So, yeah, I can't miss that off because no matter what I do with that, it just seems to absolutely love this particular position. And uh, as I've, you might have seen from some of my videos, it really takes to cuttings quite easily. They root quite easily. Get it in a position that it likes and it absolutely adores it and romps away and will produce just an endless amount of these gorgeous red blooms. As you can see, I mean, this is about as scarce as the blooms get when, you know, I've still got three on it or two on it and, and two coming even though i'm telling you it doesn't really bloom at this time of year but come march time it will be absolutely covered again in lovely bloom so i can't miss that off that's definitely one of my favorite warm growing plants um is that three i'm losing count already i'm not going to pick the miltoniopsis even though it's fantastic but i mean it's an absolutely gorgeous one and i have another one i think it's junit 8 it's called back here I think that proves more or less to my liking anyway that I can grow Miltoniopsis. So I've now, I think, equaled my record for the number of Miltoniopsis plants that are actually surviving. I think I've killed two and I've got two thriving. So yeah, well, not going to put Miltoniopsis on because um, even though I think I have, in inverted commas, cracked the cur. Uh, I know that they can be quite temperamental and it wouldn't surprise me one little bit if either of those just suddenly kicked up its toes and passed away. So uh, we're still on number, is that three or we've had Tredescantia, we've got, yeah, so that's number four this one, isn't it? So as I say, I would, at another time of the year, pick another five plants. But because at the moment I am having a little bit of a thing for Hippiastrum, I've got to choose a Hippiastrum, haven't I? I mean, it's practically impossible to fail with them. It's all there in the bulb, and providing you put them in the warmth, then they're just going to, they're going to bloom. I don't really think, other than withholding water, that you're going to have much of a problem. This one's going over a little bit now. That flower will be gone tomorrow. But hopefully this will get another spike. I have another one plant at the back there, which should give me another spike. I've just planted two new ones that I've got back there, which I'm actually going to bring into bloom now. And they should be in bloom, hopefully, in another month or two. So I'm going to choose Hippiastrum because I think... That's a difficult one to go wrong with. Also in the running could have been 
this lovely begonia griffon that's doing really well now now that i remember to water it i could have chosen my caleria which is about to bloom and um, there's some really nice begonias doing very well here at the moment but i'm not going to choose those and um, there's another beautiful begonia luxuriant which is doing well there but i think i'm going to choose an apenthes because just look at the number of pictures on this rebecca sopa absolutely gorgeous and again this is actually um it's one of those rare nepenthes that will do really well in cooler temperatures i think it will go down to 12. Uh, so what my plan is that eventually when i get some more warmer growing ones i would like a lower eye but they're just so expensive when i get some some maybe hamata even but again <laughs> expense too expensive but when i get some more species because that's what i'd like then i might move one of these over into the cooler side and see how it does over in the cooler side now, you might remember a video quite recently where i said this one on the left isn't really producing many pictures well in that short time it's produced two quite small ones but they will grow bigger and um, that looks like it's definitely going to come that one up there looks like it's definitely going to come so yeah they're, they're definitely good doers so uh definitely not going to choose a vanda because that vanda has been in my possession for three years and done absolutely nothing on the produce roots it might just be that particular vanda i don't know so have we gone through all five now let's just run through to the one uh, brassia two the phalaenopsis over the three uh hippiastrum four and did i choose another one? Oh yeah the nepenthes over the for five so that's my five top warm growing plants for the moment you may notice this is a little short for me and i'm sure many of you are cheering but tomorrow is the start of the gardening season for me anyway so i shall be out all week and i'm really pleased to actually get away from the house as you can imagine we've been locked down for so long but it's great to be actually getting out and it's looking like a sunny week for once so i can't wait to get started and get some actual money in my pocket and get a bit of fresh air at the same time so i'm sure you agree it does look just looking through the viewfinder on my phone here just that whole kind of picture there looks really really nice to my eye anyway i'm really pleased with the way things are growing um, just that little bit of sun that we've had over this last couple of days has really got things going um, i think we are in for a really good growing week that light makes all the difference it's well more important to have the sunlight than it is to have grow lights the grow lights really just get it through those really dark winter months with the really short days um, so what I would like to ask you is, first of all, which of those that I chose are your favourites? Secondly, are there any that you know I grow over here in the warm side of the greenhouse that I haven't chosen as one of my top five? <gasps> you know what? I just forgot I missed one off. I said there might be more than five. I've got to choose this one, haven't I? Again, I shall put either photos or video up. So this is the Epicatanthi, Epicatanthi Volcano Trick crossed with Lelio Catalea Janet Sparkle. It has a, a tons of names. I did say we was going to call it Bob. I've got to choose that because it's only just finished flowering again and I've no doubt it could be flowering again within another few weeks. Even if I cut off all the roots at the side, which I did, all it did was start to grow them on the other side instead. It just doesn't mind. It loves this position so much don't need to do anything with it other than keep it watered and it absolutely thrives so that's actually my top six so you've got one one extra one so that's two questions third question is if you had my conditions and a greenhouse like mine and you thought there's only one plant i can grow in there what would it be so what would your warm growing plant your top warm growing plant be that is very very tolerant of all these different conditions and will still give you the best blooms or the best interest for the longest season what would you choose i'd love to know this because i might go and buy one myself okay so i hope you enjoyed that fairly short video for me and for now i shall see you on the next one bye